I received review copies of games for the purposes of making this video, so thanks to Zoch Verlag and Hachette Board Games UK. Maneuver your Vespa to deliver magnetic pizzas against the clock while the city walls shake in Piazza Rabazza. Flick marbles to land them in your desired slot, but will your opponents guess which slot you were aiming for? Diego Drakenzahn won the Kinderspiel des Jahres in 2010. Accurately flick the turtle down the water slide, then flip over animal tiles to progress on your player board. Landing closer to the centre of the pool allows you to flip more tiles, but you'll need to remember which tiles were which in the memory game Turtle Splash. I'm Adam Porter. I design games and I review them with a focus on product design. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe and click like. Today I'm reviewing three dexterity games for children. Turtle Splash from Gigamic and Piazza Rabazza from Zoc are both new releases, while Diego Drakenzahn, or Diego Dragon Tooth in English, is an older game from Harbour. But I've only come across it recently and it bears comparison with the others, so I've bundled them together in this kids dexterity mega review. All three games are playable in under 30 minutes for two to four players with an age range of five or six years and up, though some of this stuff is fun for adults too. In Piazza Rabazza, your goal is to deliver pizzas to the customers shown on your order cards. You start your turn by winding up the piece at the top of the city and then letting it spin, causing the city walls to shake. While the city vibrates, you manoeuvre the pizza boy around the city walls and he carries a small magnetic pizza and when you get close to a customer illustrated on a city wall, the pizza will jump off your bike and stick to the customer. This allows you to discard the corresponding order card from your stack. Of course, if you accidentally deliver pizza to the wrong customer, a lucky opponent may be able to discard their order card instead. Try to deliver one pizza to each corner of the city before the walls stop shaking. Each player does this in turn until one player discards their last order card and wins the game. In Diego Dragon 2, three marbles are placed at the top of a sloping board, and these represent fireballs. On your turn, you draw a tile which tells you the item you're going to aim your fireballs at. You flick the marbles in an attempt to land them in the corresponding slot, and each accurate flick scores you one point. But before you declare your score, your opponents each select a card to guess which slot you are aiming for. If they're correct, they also score a point, so you'd best do a bit of bluffing to throw them off the scent. After a set number of turns, the highest scorer wins. Turtle Splash sees players flicking a wooden disc down a cardboard slope, aiming to land it in the centre of the pool. Depending on where you land, you'll get to flip over one, two or three animal tiles. Thematically, the turtle is splashing the animals and revealing them from their hiding places. The aim of the game is to flip over the correct animal tiles in the order shown on your unique player board. Whenever you flip a tile which corresponds to the next animal on your board, you can advance your marker one space. If you don't find any corresponding animals, you gain a rubber ring, which allows you to flip an extra tile on your next turn. All tiles are flipped face down again at the end of your turn, so you need to memorise the positions of the various animals. And of course, your opponents will be watching and remembering too. The game ends when one player reaches the end of all three tracks on their player board, winning the game. The journey of a product begins with outward appearances. It's the box cover that most customers see first, especially for children's games, where customers are less likely to be scouring the internet for reviews and rules forums. Kids' games are bought by parents, and parents are short of time. If it looks exciting and engaging, well that may well result in a purchase. The Piazza Rabazza box is particularly appealing. The scene on the cover is beautifully captured by veteran board game artist Dennis Lohausen, and it captures the frantic mood of the gameplay perfectly. The style is reminiscent of the recent Pixar film Luca, which makes the game all the more appealing. The game is beautiful to look at on the table, and the back of the box captures that too. The box art in Diego Dragon Tooth is charming. It's an exciting image, a dragon shooting fireballs, with a picture book quality to the drawing by Peter Brown. As always with Harbour Games, the garish yellow border dominates and the central image gets a bit lost. But that's their brand, and it's one that parents trust. Turtle Splash has gorgeous artwork from artist Maya Zayden. The box cover is really fun. The animals are adorable, and they're having a great time. This just makes me want to play. Let's find out why that red panda is so darn happy. 
There are, of course, a couple of hurdles before the fun can commence. In children's games, particularly those with toy-like structures involved, there's often a degree of construction before you can get playing. And Piazza Rabazza is such a game. You'll spend a few minutes putting stickers on pieces and slotting cardboard tiles together to build the city before your first game. This is always fiddly, and it's often frustrating in games. And I've certainly seen worse examples, but I didn't enjoy this aspect of Piazza Rabazza. Thankfully, the structure can be largely left in one piece for future games, and it still fits in the box. The Diego Dragontooth board is a much simpler affair in a single piece, and I was delighted to find that the more complex structure of Turtle Splash was pre-assembled. The animal tiles have even been pre-punched and provided in a little bag. That really is going above and beyond. Kudos to Gigamic. The next hurdle to getting playing is learning the rules. And these games are so simple, I had no trouble understanding how Driego Dragontooth worked within seconds. And Turtle Splash didn't take much longer. I have many, many Zoch Verlag games in my collection, and I frequently find their rulebooks a little bit confusing. And this was once again the case with Piazza Rabazza. The publisher here had interspersed basic rules in one column with advanced rules in a second column and shared rules sprawling between the two alternate modes of play. This was interspersed with gags, I think. The translation wasn't the clearest. It's by no means a hard game to learn, but the manual makes it trickier than it should be. I rate games using my engagement ladder system. I award 0 to 3 points for 5 different categories, and each point scored climbs the game one rung up the ladder. A score of 10 or above indicates a real favourite with me. For thematic immersion, none of the games are strong. Turtle Splash and Diego Dragon Tooth don't really have any meaningful narrative. They're abstract exercises with an appealing backdrop. Piazza Rabazza makes a bit more sense, but honestly, the whole thing is so frantic, you don't spend much time thinking about what's going on. So all three games climb one rung. For meaningful interaction, Piazza Rabazza is the weakest. It's really a solo exercise, manoeuvring that bike around the town. The advanced rules allow other players to discard a card if you accidentally deliver to the wrong customer, but it's a very passive sort of interaction. It happens infrequently, and always by accident. Diego Dracontooth is surprisingly interactive with its bluffing element. A lot of the fun in the game is the conversations, the misdirection, rather than the simple act of flicking marbles. Of course, younger players are likely to totally overlook this aspect of the game, but it's great that you can score points on another player's turn regardless. Turtle Splash is very interactive. Flipping over animal tiles is perilous, because you might accidentally reveal exactly the animal your opponent needs. The game is a race between players to complete their tracks, and that adds a great sense of competition. I'm scoring Piazza Rabazza a zero, but Turtle Splash and Diego Dragontooth each climb two rungs. The next category is Challenge and Stress, and this is where Piazza Rabazza excels. Negotiating your way around those shaky walls under time pressure is a pretty manic, tense affair. Diego Dragontooth has the tension of the reveal, which slot were they aiming for, and did I guess it correctly? And Turtle Splash? Well, there are two tense moments. The flick? Will it land close enough to the centre? And the reveal of tiles? Did I remember correctly, or am I going to give away information to my opponents? So Piazza Rabazza climbs three, and the two flicking games climb two rungs each. Feedback describes the manner in which players interact with the game itself. When you take an action, does the game respond in some way? Flicking always provides the purest visceral form of feedback. And likewise, pushing the bike around the city in Piazza Rabazza is tactile. Turtle Splash is the most generous with its rewards, though. On a turn, you might advance anything from zero to four spaces on your various tracks, depending on the accuracy of your turtle flick. This creates opportunities for exciting comebacks and leading players having a bad turn and falling behind. Importantly, the outcome is always based on the skill of the player, so it never feels unfair. Piazza Rabazza climbs one, Diego Dragontooth climbs two, and Turtle Splash progresses three rungs up the ladder. For meaningful choices, we've got to measure our expectations. These are children's games, so they're never going to be brain burners. Piazza Rabazza is an action game through and through. There aren't any decisions to be made. Diego Dragontooth requires a little bit more thought. It's all about analysing your opponent and calling their bluffs. 
and Turtle Splash has the strong memory element to it. The decisions aren't strategic ones, they're an exercise in recall. Which tile should I turn over next? Piazza Rabazza doesn't progress, and the flicking games climb one rung each. The final scores are a disappointing 5 for Piazza Rabazza, 8 for Diego Dragontooth, and 9 for Turtle Splash. I would normally deduct a point from Piazza Rabazza for the awkward setup, but the toy-like quality of the game more than makes up for it. I should say at this point, this scoring system is calibrated to my tastes as an experienced adult gamer, albeit one with a preference for simple games. Some children might not care at all for meaningful choices in games, and others will prioritise toy-like qualities, which would lift Piazza Rabazza a whole lot higher up that ladder. Moving on to my product design checklist. Are the games innovative? Well, I think Piazza Rabazza is very innovative. It's a great idea from Jens Peter Schleiman and Guido Hoffmann, two inventors who are known for high concept design and frequent use of three-dimensional toy-like components. Schleiman's recent Kinderspiel des Jahres winner Magic Mountain actually has a slight feel of Diego Dragontooth about it. I recently reviewed Schleiman's Berg Appenzell, which has a similarly impressive table presence. I'm not sure that Dragontooth or Turtle Splash are truly innovative, but that's okay. They use familiar mechanisms well, and they generate fresh, fun experiences. Do these products answer a need? Well, not really. No one's crying out for another memory game or another gimmicky action game. We have so many already. But I still enjoy seeing designers twisting mechanisms into new forms, applying their craft. Personally, I find I learn a lot from exploring children's games. Their mechanisms are so stripped back and they often utilise components in ingenious ways that designers of more adult games would never consider. Will these products grow with their user? No, I don't think so. None of them reveal any new depths on repeated play. I could see Turtle Splash becoming a family favourite, because it's just really fun and engaging. You could certainly develop a family metagame around Diego Dragontooth with the bluffs and double bluffs. But Piazza Rabazza is more of a visceral, one-off experience to be pulled out occasionally when you want to get the adrenaline pumping. As always, we'll finish with my idea execution matrix. So a strong commercial product marries a fantastic core concept with outstanding execution, and this pushes the game up into the red or orange part of the grid. Weaker products sit in the blue section and sell poorly. Piazza Rabazza is a very strong idea. New, exciting, and visually appealing. But the execution is weaker though. The setup and the rulebook are a chore, and honestly, the structure doesn't quite function as it should. The timer seems very brief, pizzas often don't leap off the bike onto the magnetic walls as easily as they should, and it's impossible to see the customers who are so beautifully illustrated on the back of a wall. Diego Dragontooth is a solid, if unexciting, idea. The execution of gameplay is really good, it plays well, but the presentation blends into the rest of Haber's range, making the game easy to miss. Of course, the Kinderspiel des Jahres win in 2010 will have lifted the product a lot. Turtle Splash, likewise, is a fairly mediocre commercial idea. It just doesn't sound as fun as it actually is to play. But the execution is outstanding. The memory and flicking aspects work together so smoothly. Who'd have thought? And the presentation by Gigamic is second to none. Turtle Splash is a game that I will pull out with adults, regardless of whether we have younger players present. Dragon Tooth will be a definite go-to for young players, and it's great fun for the parents too. Piazza Rabazza is more of an event for kids with short attention spans. A fun toy and centerpiece, but unlikely to be something that I would return to often. If you'd like to learn about loads more children's games, click on the link above, and until next time, all the best.